when you're sick and you really, really, really want water. You really, really want that cold water. But that cold water will increase you in sickness. And the doctor holds it back from you. Knowing that it's, go it's not good for your condition right now. But when you're in that pain, can you see outside of that pain? No, that pain is influencing your thought process, your spirituality, your perspective on life, your perspective on death. You're seeing everything through that lens of pain. And suddenly all you want is, Ya Allah, get me out of this. Ya Allah, get me out of this pain. And Allah holds it back from you because He knows it's better for you. Because why would Allah give a drug to an addict and your addiction is dunya? Why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feed your addiction? And many times we think to ourselves, we see a person who's in ease and we see a person who's in hardship. And essentially, and this is one of the very powerful uh, uh, lines of Ibn Ata'illah Iskandari rahimahullah ta'ala. He said that throughout this, the world's history, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overwhelms one group of people with ease and He overwhelms one group of people with hardship and you rarely find people in between. What does that mean? You know, if you study history, Economic inequality is nothing new. It existed. It's existed throughout our world history. Usually the rich are filthy rich and the poor are really poor. That's the way the world has worked. The elite usurp the resources that exist in the world and usually the richest people in the world are one or two percent. Now perhaps that inequality gap is larger now than it's ever been before, but it's always existed. It existed in the society of the Prophet Wasallam. It existed in this society before now. It's existed throughout most of the world and throughout history. That the poor are very poor and that the rich are very, very rich. And there are two paths to Allah. There is the path of ease, which is to be responded to with gratitude in this world. And there's the path of hardship to which the response is patience. Both of these arrive at Jannah. The majority of people will figure it out in hardship and not in ease. And that's why the majority of Ahlul Jannah, the majority of the people of paradise, are poor people, are fuqara and masakeen. They make up the majority because it's easier to be distracted by wealth than it is to be distracted by hardship. It's far easier. Now, if these are the two paths to Allah, if I was to present a choice to each and every single one of you and say you can either be put in ease and be grateful or you can be put in hardship and be patient, there isn't a single person in here, I think, that would say, I'll take the hardship and patience. Each and every single one of us would say, okay, great. Let Allah give us and we'll be in ease and we'll say Alhamdulillah and we'll be all good, right? That's how each and every single one of us would naturally respond. And we will protest our case to Allah. Ya Allah, get me out of this hardship and I will be grateful. But Allah knows what will happen to you. Allah knows what will happen to your personality. Allah knows that if this dunya is given to you, it will distance you. And Allah holds it back. And never equate your situation with your status. Surah Al-Kahf. Allah punished a man by giving him an extra garden. Allah loved a couple, so he took away their child. Think about that. If you're that couple and if you're that man whose gardens are increasing, and that couple who just lost a child, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that couple, and this person is only further entrenching himself in disobedience and in disregard and ruining himself in the hereafter. But I want to throw something at you guys inshallah ta'ala with my last few minutes. And that is number one, do not ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever putting you in an unfavorable situation to draw close to Him. What Allah has given you, your share of dunya, your share of hardship, your share of ease, Allah has given you the right slate so that you can respond in the right way. Don't ever think that Allah is putting you in an unfavorable situation. That's number one. Number two, the most noble man in terms of his lineage, in terms of his pure nobility in the worldly sense and also in the hereafter sense, is who the Prophet ﷺ said is Yusuf ﷺ. Allah mentions about the Prophet ﷺ said about Yusuf ﷺ that he is Nabiullah, the Prophet of Allah, the son of the Prophet of Allah, the son of the Prophet of Allah, the son of the Prophet of Allah. There's no man more noble than that. But subhanAllah, the ulama say, look, Sharauhu bi thamanin bakhsin darahim ma'duda. Yusuf alayhi salam is pulled out of a well, a slave, the one who's selling him doesn't value him, nor do the one who's purchasing him value him. SubhanAllah, he's the product of a transaction. 
He's, the, he's a noble man in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most noble lineage, a prophet of Allah. And the one who's selling him just wants to get rid of him, so he only values him at a few coins. And the one who's purchasing him doesn't see any value in, in, in him either, so he gives him a few coins. Yusuf is completely considered devalued in the worldly sense while still maintaining great nobility in the sight of Allah because this world and everything that is an indicator in this world is worthless to Allah. It is of absolutely no value to Allah. But here's the little twist I'm going to throw at you guys. Why in the world, why in the world, any of us living in this context that we're in right here would allow ourselves the idea or the uh, luxury of dwelling in this idea that we are in the bottom 1% of the world. This group of people that's sitting right here is of the top 1% in terms of privilege in the world. Yet how many of us in our entitlement look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and are saying, why me? Privileged in regards to our safety and security, privileged in regards to our wealth, because you know, just think about where we are right now and what situation we're in. Why do we always assume underdog status when we're talking about hardship and ease? Why?